Hi there gratitude seeker and welcome to a new episode based on the words of people you know that are big believers in the power of gratitude. You can hear words of wisdom from Tony Robbins on episode 675, Bob Proctor on episode 677, Brene Brown on episode 690, Dr. Joe Dispenza on episode 713, Deepak Chopra on episode 739 and now in episode 746 Jack Canfield. The purpose of this kind of episode is to learn from the best, from those people that we admire and that inspire us, to explore their perspective on gratitude and see how we can implement it in our life as well. Please subscribe or follow right now to make sure you're going to get all of these amazing nuggets of wisdom, it's free and it's one of the best things you can do for yourself right now. Today's featured celebrity, as I mentioned, is Jack Canfield. He was born on August 19, 1944, and is an American author, motivational speaker, corporate trainer, and entrepreneur. He's the co-author of the Chicken Soup for the Soul series, which has more than 250 titles, and 500 million copies in print in over 40 languages. He's well known for his appearance in the hit movie The Secret and he holds a Guinness World Record for having seven books on the New York Times bestseller list at the same time. But before getting started I have two gratitude seekers that I want to express my appreciation to. Anne Varney from the UK and Karen Diller from the US that you also heard on the Gratitude Podcast a few episodes ago. They left some amazing reviews on Apple Podcasts and I'm always so grateful for receiving these kinds of reviews from you, the Gratitude Seekers. It feels like the communication is both ways and it's also very helpful for people that haven't heard the podcast yet. So here's the first one. Love, love, love this podcast. I'm so grateful for the energy of this podcast. It really does help you realign with your higher self and the gifts that are in your energy vibration. Thank you. This one was from Anne Varney from the UK. Thank you so much, Anne. And the second one from Karen. Wonderful podcast. I'm so grateful for this podcast. I found it during a very sad, hard time in my life and it really helped me on this journey through this period and gave me hope not just for my own personal situation but for humanity. Hearing other people speak on this topic makes me realize we are never alone. Karen Dillard. Thank you so much Karen for writing this wonderful review. I'm really happy that we got together to speak on the podcast as well and I'm really happy that the podcast was there through that sad and hard time in your life. But now let's get to the five ideas about gratitude that I found really interesting from Jack Canfield. Usually we have three, but uh, he talks so much about gratitude and the power of gratitude that um, I had to choose more three were just not enough because they are some really powerful ideas that I believe um, they're, they're important to be amplified and I'm really happy that I'm able to do this. The first idea is that gratitude and appreciation are one of the highest states you can be in and that it connects you to abundance and we'll explore that a little bit more after listening to Jack Canfield's perspective. Well, appreciation is one of the highest emotional states you can be in. It's the state of abundance. The law of attraction states that like attracts life, and if you are grateful for what you have already received, you will attract more for which you can be grateful. Now, many people find that it requires great diligence to cultivate an attitude of appreciation. We are culturally conditioned to focus on what we don't have rather than appreciating what we've already received. What I love about this short bit is that it also helps us understand why it's harder for us to be grateful. 
I believe that our neurology has a lot to do with this. But of course, the cultural conditioning is huge. Much of our learning isn't actually done through teaching, but through the things that we see every day in the media, in other people, in our environment. We are conditioned, whether we like it or not, whether we are aware or not, to have certain beliefs and certain ways of being. Thankfully, it's within our power to change them. Once we become aware of them, we can do something to change them. And since you're listening to this podcast, you're one of those people that have chosen gratitude. So you're breaking free of your cultural conditioning, which is amazing. It's really not easy to be one of the few, and I honor you for sticking to it and for not giving up on choosing gratitude, on seeking gratitude, on exploring how gratitude can work wonders in your life. Another part of this short bit from Jack Canfield that I believe is very, very interesting is the fact that he mentions that gratitude connects us to abundance. And I can't help but see a pattern here. There are so many great thinkers that connect gratitude to abundance. So regardless of your personal or country's economical situation, my recommendation is to use gratitude to enter a state of abundance. If you don't know how to do it, I have a whole course explaining that. But in my research, I found another video that I felt was very connected with this idea that Jack Canfield just shared. He talked about the Warren Buffett of Japan, Wahe Takeda, that does something that I've seen that it works in my situation as well. He uses thank you as a silent mantra. Of course, he's not saying thank you, thank you, thank you. He's saying arigato, arigato, arigato. But what's wonderful about this habit is that it connects you to the energy of gratitude. It connects you firstly to the emotion and after that you can give it meaning outside of yourself. It's similar to how we buy things. We firstly have the emotional urge and afterwards we explain it rationally. We can do something similar with gratitude. Whenever we want to connect with gratitude and see gratitude around us, we firstly connect to the emotion by saying thank you like a mantra. Thank you for that. Arigato, arigato, arigato. And that level of thankfulness raises his vibration. And he said, when I'm in that vibration, I always know the right thing to do. And I'm attracting opportunities. I'm attracting money. I'm attracting uh, venture capitalists that want to play with me, that have great ideas and so forth. What I love about this short bit is the fact that if we think about it, what Japan's Warren Buffett is saying is the fact that even to keep the abundance that we have and to multiply it, gratitude is extremely helpful. And you can feel that. When he said that, he was in a state of gratitude and abundance. For him it was similar to playing because there was no fear there. And I believe it's one of the reasons why gratitude is so powerful, especially when it comes to abundance. It helps us overcome our fear and see the resources and attract the resources. It helps us be more open to the resources that were already there, we just couldn't see them. So that's why I was saying that regardless of your personal or your country's economical situation, there are always resources available and there are always opportunities. And when you're open to them, you find new solutions, you find new ideas that help you experience more abundance. So let's get to our second idea from Jack Canfield. Appreciate yourself. We all need acknowledgement. But the most important acknowledgement is that which you give yourself. Now in addition to celebrating your big successes, acknowledge your small daily successes as well. 
One of the most powerful ways to acknowledge and appreciate yourself is by doing the mirror exercise. Now this powerful exercise is one in which you appreciate yourself for the day's accomplishments while talking to yourself in the mirror right before you go to bed at night. It's a little weird, but it's an exercise that should be performed every night for a minimum of 40 days. Some of my students have done it every day for years. Isn't that amazing to be doing this kind of exercise each day for years? Can you imagine how your self-image would shift when you would do this every day? We all yearn to be appreciated, to be recognized in our field, in our relationships, but sometimes we're keeping these things away from us because we tend to be so rough with ourselves. And even if other people appreciate us or tell us things that can make us feel appreciated, we might just dismiss them or ignore them because we hold true to what we think about ourselves. And this exercise is a great idea on how we can change that, on how we can see those things that we are doing right, those small things that nobody sees but that are worth appreciating. Even this, what you're doing right now, the fact that you are listening to a podcast on gratitude. You could have chosen to play the role of a victim or to complain about your situation, but you chose to listen to an uplifting, inspiring podcast. This is something that's worth appreciating about yourself and about your day. Jack goes on and gives some other examples of these small things, this small bits of progress that we're making. The fact that we chose to eat a salad today instead of chocolate or that we went for a walk or for a run even though we might not have felt like doing that. Or maybe the fact that we chose to be kind instead of just replying with anger. And by acknowledging ourselves, by appreciating ourselves for these things, we're fueling these positive habits plus they make us more resilient and more autonomous and when we receive acknowledgement or appreciation or praise we recognize it and accept it much easier and this somehow leads us to the third idea on gratitude from Jack Canfield as you practice gratitude and notice the positive effect it has on your life pay attention to those effects notice how it makes you happier and how inside yourself it feels like your energy is vibrating at a higher level. Focus on how wonderful that experience is and always remember that the quickest way to turn around your mood and change your experience is to practice gratitude and appreciate everything that's good in your life. So by paying attention to the progress, by appreciating the progress that we are making each and every day, we're building momentum we're building positive reinforcement for those habits that support us, that support our happiness, that support our growth as humans. When we are aware of how great we're feeling and the impact that gratitude or other positive habits has on our life, it's so much easier to keep it going. And for those things that we are doing when nobody's watching, when it's just us, that are seeing the progress and appreciating ourselves for the efforts, the beautiful part is that we're going to attract that exact same thing from the outside. We're going to attract acknowledgement, praise, appreciation. And the beautiful part is that it's only going to be a confirmation. We're already full, we're already happy, that's just going to be the cherry on top but of course since we'll have the habit in place that cherry will taste really really good and we'll be able to appreciate that on a whole different level and this leads us to the fourth idea that can change our life from Jack Canfield it's actually a series of stories of how gratitude can create ripple effects of appreciation in the world So it's not just about us being appreciated, praised and recognized. Our habit of self-appreciation will make it much easier to be kind 
and to show appreciation to other people as well. You know, one of our early Chicken Soup for the Soul books, I, I put a story in there by a man named Art Buckwald, who talked about a man who was walking down the street with a friend, and all of a sudden the man stopped and he looked over at the construction workers, and he said, I just want to thank you guys for building these amazing buildings in New York. I know how hard it is. I really appreciate the contribution you're making to the city. And as they walked away, my friend said, or his friend said, what, what was that about? He said, well, I just want to thank those guys to kind of make their day. He says, oh, okay. So a couple of minutes later, he's down, he sees a taxi driver and a person gets out of the taxi and he says, wow, did, I, I just want to, he reached into the taxi. So I just want to thank you before you pull off for all the work you're doing. Cause you're taking people all around the city every day long, fighting with the traffic, making it easy for them to get to where they want to go. Hope you have a great day. And his friend's starting to think he's a little bit crazy now. And they walk a little further and he smiles at this very unattractive woman. And his friend says, what's with you? You just smiled and told a very unattractive woman to have a great day. Why did you smile at her? He said, well, maybe she's a teacher. And if she's a teacher, she goes to her classroom, those kids are in for a really good day. And so the reality is every time you smile, every time you appreciate someone, every time you appreciate anything in the universe, you are creating ripples of that love and appreciation going out into the world. Talk about being the change you want to see in the world. I love this idea of creating ripples of appreciation and I'm sure you've been at the receiving end of it as well if you think about it and I don't know about you but when that happens to me it really makes my day and one example of this is from this weekend me and my girlfriend went to a friend's book launch and after that we went for lunch with a friend and her 10 year old boy while we were at the book launch she mentioned that she's been listening to the gratitude podcast and that she has applied many of the ideas that she learned from the podcast with her family and that was amazing to hear but what happened next really blew my mind i saw her 10 year old boy being so grateful and appreciating all of the small things even the things that I forgot were there. He told me how much he appreciated, how much he liked my hairstyle and the way I dressed, that he liked my attitude and my calm way of being. And whenever he thanked me or the waitress or my girlfriend, he was actually feeling the gratitude. And if you've been listening to the podcast, I talk a lot about this idea that I believe it's important when we say thank you to actually feel the gratitude and for me that was mind-blowing that was just amazing and it made me feel so good knowing that my vision for the world is actually coming to fruition and I'm seeing that firsthand and I'm very grateful for the fact that many of you are fathers or mothers or grandmas or grandpas and you're helping me create this beautiful world where there are people like Marcus the young boy that I was talking about that are not just polite but they're also grateful for you for your presence for other people for the small things that they're experiencing is the kind of world that I want to be a part of and that we are creating together by being the change that we want to see in the world. And this leads us to the fifth idea that can change your life from Jack Canfield. It's about taking the time to slow down and actually feel a profound sense of thankfulness deep in your heart and realizing how incredibly fortunate you are to be alive, living the life that you have. You know, when you take the time to do the work, to feel this level of awe-filled appreciation in your heart and in your soul, something incredible happens you'll experience a powerful sense of positivity bubbling up inside you, lifting your mood and your spirits. It will awaken a sense of joy or even bliss that raises your energetic frequency and thus puts you in a more positive energy vibration that you then put out into the world. And these powerful vibrations are going to resonate with other people and the things that are vibrating at the same level, the same frequency as you are, thus attracting them to your life. So as it happened to me with Marcus, by feeling grateful, you'll be attracting other people 
that are grateful as well. And circling back to the first idea, a great way of doing this is eliciting gratitude on an emotional level. Just say thank you as a mantra. Whenever you have some time off, whenever you're bored, whenever you feel like taking out your phone, instead just stop and say either out loud or within yourself, thank you, thank you, thank you, as many times as you feel like it. And if you can, to amplify this feeling, I find that putting my hands on my heart, on my heart chakra, helps me better connect with the actual feeling of gratitude, to that deep feeling of gratitude. So if you're able to, take the time right now and put your hands on your chest and just keep repeating this mantra. I recommend a minimum of seven times and I usually stop when I feel that I am connected to that feeling of gratitude. So that was it for today. I hope you have an amazing rest of the week and I invite you to write a review if you feel like it. Thank you so much for listening. This has been Georgian Banta. Don't forget to keep seeking and spreading gratitude. Hi, I'm Ellie Krieger, host of the podcast, One Real Good Thing, where we dive into one thing you can do today to propel your life in a healthy direction. In conversation with food, nutrition, and lifestyle experts, plus celebrity guests and friends, it's all about mapping a path to a joyful, healthy life full of flavor, one real good thing at a time. Find me at digitantpodcasts.com or wherever you get your podcasts and visit elliekrieger.com for more delicious content on one real good thing.